is it not necessary to treat the witness uh, properly before they start answering questions? By treating the witnesses, what, what do you mean, uh, Senator? So, 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 <laughs> not tea, so subjecting them to uh, Article 125, Honorable Speaker. But it's, 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 it's up to you. Well, this is not the first time we are having such a session. We shall proceed as we always do. Very well, Honorable Speaker. It's just that uh, out of abundance of caution, uh, we require that people be put under oath for the truthfulness to come out. It's a terrible time for truthful men. Honorable Speaker, the question to the Cabinet Secretary responsible for the National Treasury and Economic Planning. Number one, what has occasioned the failure by the eCitizen Digital Platform to process and reflect payments made to some institutions such as the National Health Insurance Fund. This is a defunct NHIF, Honorable Speaker, and could the Cabinet Secretary explain steps taken to remedy the situation? Number two, where does the convenience fee charged and all other payments that fail to reflect on the platform end up? Thirdly, Honorable Speaker, could the Cabinet Secretary report on the safety, efficiency, efficacy and reliability of the eCitizen digital payment platform in light of the numerous complaints of delays and technical issues that followed the onboarding of significant number of government services on the platform? I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable CS, you may now proceed to respond. Um, Honorable Speaker of the Senate, I want to thank you and uh, begin by saying that it's really refreshing to be back here wearing a different cap. Uh, Mr. Speaker, you may recall we were with you in the 10th Parliament that the better part of the 10th Parliament we spend in this chamber as the other one was being renovated. But having said that, uh, Mr. Speaker, again allow me to uh, register my apologies because last time I was supposed to appear before the Senate, I got engaged and I didn't, I didn't appear before the Senate. I want to just point out that I was so prepared to come and answer to these questions on that day up to the last evening to the day when now um, His Excellency the President uh, gave the nod that you would meet the World Bank team that was here and just had a few hours uh, left to leave the country led by the Vice President of the World Bank. And so that is why I wrote a letter late to request that uh, uh, the session be, or my appearance be rescheduled to another date. It was no, in no way trying to undermine the responsibility of this House in terms of discharging its mandate as an oversighting institution. I have been around uh, here for 17 years and I know the value or the two houses in oversighting the executive. I, would, I wouldn't do, have done anything to the contrary. The fact, two days before uh, the scheduled date, I appeared before Senate Committee on Finance and Budget uh, on a matter touching on my ministry. And even after that, I again appeared before Senate Committee on Transport, again answering I questions relating to issues touching on my ministry. So. Mr. Speaker, I wanted to start from there. Uh, having said that, Mr. Speaker, allow me now to respond to the question. That is uh, question number 021 by the Senator for Nairobi City County, Senator Aido Sifuna, who asked me to address three pertinent issues relating to e-citizen uh, digital plat platform. Uh, and, and also, I will answer the other questions, but it is question 021 that I'm responding to. The Senator wanted to know what occasioned the failure by the e-citizen digital platform to process and reflect payments made to some institutions such as the National Health Insurance Fund, NHIF, and could the Cabinet Secretary also explain steps taken to remedy the situation? And uh, this is my response, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, payments to e-citizen platform are made in designated and defined formats. This format is defined in the system, and for any payment to succeed, it needs to follow the format expected by the system. For instance, if an NHIF 
member is paying for the monthly contribution and the national ID number is, for example, 11223344. This is just an example of what could be an ID number. Then the payment format to be keyed into the system will be NHIF M 11223344. Any payment which does not conform to this format will definitely be unsuccessful. Therefore, it is important for any person making any payment to follow the prescribed format so that the payment is successful on the platform. As part of the adoption, we always insist that any MGA on the e-citizen platform should train and sensitize its members or customers on the procedure of making payments on e-citizen platform. The National Treasury is working with ministries, departments, and agencies to create awareness, literacy on use of digital services, and sensitize the public on the use and adoption of the e-citizen digital platform. This is an ongoing exercise where periodic trainings and sensitization program are being conducted. On question number two, where the senator for Nairobi City County wanted to know, and actually this is the question, where does the convenience fee charged and all other payments that fail to reflect on the platform end up? And this is my response, Honorable Speaker. The e-citizen platform only collects convenience fee for successful transactions. When a user or citizen makes a payment, the payment will, uh, will be collected first by the payment service providers, uh, providers channels which include mobile money for mobile network operators, RTGS, and e-deposits for banks or wallets for non-bank um, payment service providers. So the e-money is then channeled to e-citizen collection account at Kenya Commercial Bank. If a payment fails, then transaction details and monies, that is payment amount and convenience fees, are retained by, uh, by, the, by payment service provider, which reverses the transaction, and e-citizen platform would be notified. The convenience fee is collected by the e-citizen platform and remitted to the e-citizen settlement account domiciled at the National Treasury. So that is the response in terms of where the convenience fee would uh, fall if, the, if um, the platform fails. Number three, could the Cabinet Secretary report on the safety, efficiency, efficacy, and reliability of the e-citizen digital payment platform in light of the numerous complaints of delays and technical issues that followed the onboarding of a significant number of government services on the platform. Mr. Speaker, again, this is my response. The e-citizen platform has witnessed tremendous growth owing to the onboarding of over 16,000 services from the previous 397 services, especially with the coming in of the new government in 2022. The services increased from 397 to 16,000. The rapid growth came with a lot of challenges to the platform, which the multi-ministerial team has been able to address. The multi-ministerial team comprises of the National Treasury, Ministry of Interior, and Ministry of ICT and Digital Economy. So far, through the Ministry of ICT and Digital Economy as the, technical, as, as the technology advisor and implementer, the platform information security has been built and implemented to ensure it is secure against cyber terrorism, hacking, and compromises which are likely to disrupt the provision of services to the e-citizen. The e-citizen platform has withstood several cyber attempts made by hackers with efforts arising from continuous platform vulnerability risk assessment. The multi-ministerial team has Security Operations Center, SOC, which continuously monitors status of systems and applications and ensures any attack is responded to immediately. There were some challenges encountered during the rapid onboarding of the services. However, the e-citizen has been able to address significant portions of those challenges to stabilize the platform. Currently, the platform is very robust 
and has immensely improved service delivery to citizens, processing approximately 120,000 transactions daily. And Mr. Speaker, I wanted just to add that if you look at even in terms of robustness, the growth, the 2022-2023 financial year, we were able to collect only 26 million, um, 26 billion, 406 million through this platform. The following financial year, when we moved full blast to e-citizen, 2023-24, we are able to collect 100 billion, 842 million. So in one year, the collections improved from 26 billion to 100 billion. We have managed to reduce leakages in the system. Having single pay bill of triple two, triple two has worked very well and visibility of our transactions has been enhanced. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I submit. Honorable Senator from Nairobi City County, you may now proceed to ask your two supplementary questions. Uh, thank you, Honorable Speaker. This is a problem of uh, uh, having this engagement now, one year down the line when a lot has changed, because this question is one year old. So I would want the Cabinet Secretary to tell this House, now that uh, we have moved from uh, NHIF to uh, SHIF and the Social Health Authority, uh, are payments to uh, the Social Health Authority or to SHIF uh, also going to be integrated with e-citizen or is there going to be a different platform for payments uh, to the social health insurance uh, uh, fund? And secondly, Honorable Speaker, I would want the Cabinet Secretary to explain to me or to this House the justification for the convenience fee, which essentially is you are paying for a service and you are being charged money for that service. So for instance, if you are remitting your monthly premiums for NHIF, what is the justification for that uh, convenience fee, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Sears, you may proceed to respond. Uh, thank you. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, the policy of the government presently is that any service that is provided should go through this standard system, e-citizen. Actually, there was a reason, a justification why we went e-citizen, because the public was complaining a lot about how um, it was inconvenient to use different platforms to collect. So even the new a social health authority must now use uh, the e-citizen e platform. On the issue of the justification for convenience fee, I want to say that this is a fee that is paid to the service provided uh, to, so that we don't again end up with uh, complicated accounting where the money that is meant for the actual service is the one that is now again being prorated and paying the service provider. But again, I want to also point out that Unlike previously, when there was a standard amount uh, for uh, just uh, the, the convenience fee, right now we, the, through a gazette notice of December 22nd, 2023, we have prorated, uh, so to speak, so that if the service is costing more, then the convenience fee also rises. If it is low, then the convenience fee is low. Like, for example, from 200 shillings, anything below 199 shillings, you only pay five shillings. Uh, anything, and it is, uh, the, the figures are provided there, I don't want to go into the, anything above 1,000, then you pay 50 shillings. So the 50 shillings is the highest, which used to be the standard fee previously before this Gazette notice. And then the dollar-denominated account is one US dollar as the highest. So that, in short, 
would be uh, the justification for the convenience fee. Uh, but again, this is an interministerial discussion that, are, uh, that gave rise to this um, convenience fee chargeable. It was not a decision of my ministry as such, but it is a government decision. Thank you. The Honorable Sears, if I had uh, Senator Sifuna correctly, uh, it is not about the amount that is being charged. It is why is it being charged? What is the just justification for the five shillings, for the ten shillings, for the fifty shillings? Why do citizens have to pay a convenience fee? That's what the Honorable Senator was asking, not really the amount you pay per service. From the name convenience, it is a convenience fee. Mr. Speaker, when you use the e-citizen platform payment system, it is convenient. And uh, you see there is already fee that would have ordinarily have been charged for these services. But now you are using a different platform, which is more convenient to the user. And so we charge the convenience fee, which ends up with the provider of the service. If honorable members have a problem with that, then that is a feedback that can be given to the government. And I, see, I stand here for the government. Uh, but I would again repeat that this is not a decision by National Treasury as and as, as, a, as a ministry, it must be interministerial. Thank you. Thank you, Honorable Sears. Senator Olakena. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, let me appreciate the, Senate, uh, the 